Antimicrobial resistance, otherwise known as AMR, is when antimicrobial agents such as antibiotics or antivirals no longer work against the bugs that they were designed to kill. What this means in practical terms is that people who need antibiotics, such as those with diarrhoea, with pneumonia, uh, those who are immunosuppressed, such as cancer patients, or those who need extra protection, like those who are about to have surgery, won't be able to have the antibiotics that they do today to give them the protection that they need. In practical terms, uh, some estimate that by 2050, 10 million people will die from antimicrobial resistance each year. Uh, to put that into context, um, at the moment we estimate that around 8.2 million people die from cancer. So it really is quite a significant toll. In terms of costs, the cumulative costs uh, are estimated to be about 100 trillion US dollars up to about 2050. So again, a really, really significant impact. Uh, with the increased uh, awareness of infectious disease threats brought about by COVID-19, now really is the time to be thinking about these issues and including AMR. Antimicrobial resistance is caused when bugs evolve or mutate, which is a normal process, uh, but if one of these mutations means that the bug is no longer able to respond to an antimicrobial agent, then that's when you get antimicrobial resistance. And when these bugs then spread into the community and overtake existing strains, that's when we have a problem. One way we make AMR more likely is if we put the microorganism under additional strain or stress. And that happens when we use low quality antimicrobials or low dose antimicrobials, or even just unregulated antimicrobials where, where they might be at a higher concentration. A lot of people think this is predominantly a healthcare thing in clinical settings. And that's true that we need to worry about it in hospitals and pharmaceutical factories, for example. However, it also occurs in food production, in fisheries, aquaculture, uh, crop production. Uh, and obviously there are, there are the downstream impacts of where that ends up in the waterworks and in the environment. Climate change is clearly very important to us and has a lot of impact on uh, the world. Um, there's obviously the risk of extreme weather and rising sea levels and temperatures affecting our infrastructure, so that needs to be taken into account. But on health, it also has the potential to change a lot of disease profiles. Uh, so for example, more air pollution might lead to more lung infections and therefore the need for more antibiotic agents. Vector-borne diseases or waterborne diseases may change, resulting in different types of microbes and different disease profiles in, in, in patients. Reduced access to clean water might lead to worse sanitation and hygiene, resulting in more infections. And also instability of, of uh, access to food and food security might lead to more malnourished people who are more prone to getting infections. So there are many areas to think about there uh, in terms of climate change and how it might affect uh, uh, people's ability to fight off infections. The threat of AMR to infrastructure owners and operators could be considered quite similar to what we've seen with COVID-19, in that you have a disease that's spreading where there is no treatment available. There are two main things that I think infrastructure owners and operators can possibly do. One is to try and mitigate the spread of an infectious disease agent. And that includes looking at operational models, people flows, ventilation through a building, uh, and, and trying to make as much contactless as possible. The second is to think about preparedness, or what some people call pandemic resilience, and that's to look at uh, adapting workflows, making sure that our, our infrastructure is versatile, flexible, uh, and can change its function if needed, that we have contingency plans in place so that if something does happen again, we don't have to turn everything off straight away. There's a lot that we can do to tackle AMR. Uh, possibly one of the most important things is to try and keep our people as healthy as possible. The more healthy people are, the less likely they are to be affected by infectious diseases uh, and the less likely they are to need antibiotics. Once we've got over that, the next thing we could try to do is to reduce transmission. And often people think about infectious disease spread as something that happens in hospitals or clinical settings, but actually there's a lot we can do in the real world as well. So infection prevention and control in the built environment, uh, in buildings, in transport settings, uh, is also very important. 
Um, working with our water colleagues, we should also try to ensure that people have access to clean water in order to be able to perform hygiene and sanitation functions as well as possible. We also, I think, need to work with our education colleagues to try and improve awareness about this issue. Certainly COVID-19 has raised the profile of infectious disease threats, but I think AMR still needs a little bit more work because people don't quite understand how it works. Within the health community and, uh, and our colleagues, we need to also work with people in uh, the environment, uh, working with animals and in agriculture, taking what we call a One Health approach. And this is to try and re reduce the emergence of antimicrobial resistance itself. Um, this includes better use of antimicrobial agents, better regulations uh, on waste management, for example. Um, and also, if we do get antimicrobial resistance outbreaks, that we've got systems in place to detect them and to be able to respond to them. Finally, uh, on the life science side, um, there's a lot of work that could be done uh, to try and find new diagnostics or new treatments to be able to help us tackle infectious disease threats in the future. At Mock McDonald, we're working on a full spectrum of projects that relate to AMR. Uh, we are the management agent for the Fleming Fund, which is a UK government programme that addresses AMR in, in, in excess of 20 low and middle income countries. Taking a One Health approach, uh, looking at coordination, laboratory strengthening and, and the data that comes out of uh, these laboratories to try and paint a clearer picture as to, uh, as to what the AMR problem is and what we can do to try to tackle it. We're also working in the hospital advisory space uh, and also working with our clinical waste uh, colleagues to see what happens to waste after it leaves uh, the clinical environment. We also partner with the UK Water Industry Forum, uh, looking at AMR and in particular uh, AMR in wastewater. We just completed a piece of work on AMR in cities, looking at the interlinkages, uh, in particular in the built environment and in transport between uh, where in cities outside of the health sector that AMR can be managed. Um, there's a lot of overlap with our work in COVID-19 and pandemic resilience. Uh, and I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity to do a lot more in this space.